Hello Calc Kids, welcome back to another lesson in calculus. This is Mr. Bean. Today's lesson we're going to focus in on what's called the ratio test for convergence. And to be able to help us before we get into the lesson, I want to help you remember some things that I hope you've learned before, but if you haven't, that's okay. I'm going to teach it to you real quick right here. And that is, what is a factorial again? So factorial, if, for example, if I say 5 factorial, that's just 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, all the way down until you get to 1. Okay, so that's factorial. So if you have an n plus 1 factorial, you can rewrite this as this here. You get n plus 1 times, and then you subtract 1, just like we did here, 5 minus 1, and then subtract 1 again, subtract 1 again. So that's what would happen. You'd have n plus 1 factorial would is equivalent to n plus 1 times n factorial. And then that is nice because then the n factorials here and here would cancel for this fraction, and you end up with just n plus 1. So that's an important uh, skill and strategy to be able to solve, solve several of the problems that we're going to work through today. And the other one is exponential. We've done this a lot, and that is just if you have these exponents, you can rewrite this as 3 to the n times 3 to the 1. You just separate these these addition inside the exponent. And then this is nice because the 3n and the 3n can cancel and you are left with just 3. So these are two skills and strategies we're going to use when working with the ratio test for simplifying things today. All right, so here's the ratio test. If you have a series that is positive terms, so we're not going to alternate between positive and negative, we're just purely positive for this series, and you take this interesting ratio where you have a of n plus 1 and you divide it by a of n then if that ratio, oh, excuse me, as the limit of n approaches infinity, so it's kind of like a horizontal asymptote of this fraction, if that is less than 1, as the limit of, of n approaches infinity, then the series converges. So the, if the ratio is smaller than 1, it converges. If that ratio is larger than 1 as you approach infinity, then the series diverges. And if that ratio actually equals 1, well, then we got a little bit of a problem, because if it's less than 1 and it converges, and if it's greater than 1 and then diverges, if it equals 1, then we just have to use another test. We don't have enough information, so we have to keep working. All right, so there is the main things for the ratio test of convergence. So let's look at a couple of series that we already know. And that is this one here. If you remember, this is a harmonic. And we've worked with this before when we did P-series. And we actually know that this thing diverges. And this, we know... Uh, that one converges. It's a p-series, and we know it converges. So what about if we use the uh, ratio test with this? Let's see how to work with the ratio test and see what it tells us. So the first thing I do is I'm going to write down that I'm taking the limit of this ratio. So this is the ratio test, and I need to figure out what that equals. So the next step is, what is a of n plus 1? That's just plugging in an n plus 1 in there. So it just instead of an n, it's now an n plus 1. And then divided by the original a of n. Well, fractions inside fractions, that's like crazy. That's too hard. So I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal instead, which gives me this. Now, my notation actually is wrong. I, for, I got a little lazy and forgot to write down that n approaches infinity. Technically, I should have written n approaches infinity, the limit of this thing. And then, so that's, uh, that's taking horizontal asymptote, right? So I have a 1 here, first degree, first degree. So it's just leading coefficients, and that equals 1. So the ratio test for this harmonic is inconclusive. I can't say anything because it actually equals one. I have to do more tests to it. All right, let's try this one. So we're doing the same thing. We take the limit as n approaches infinity of this, this uh, ratio, and I plug in an n plus one, quantity squared. On bottom, I still have the n squared. Multiply by the reciprocal instead, make it a little easier. And then I have an n squared and an n squared. Leading coefficients are one. Put them all together. The limit Again, I was being lazy. I should have had in here the limit as n approaches infinity of this whole thing, and then that equals 1. So what can I say about this? Nothing. I don't know. The ratio test doesn't give me enough information for this problem. So what you're, I'm trying to show you is that actually every time you have a p-series, you can't use the ratio test. It's always going to be inconclusive when you have a p-series. So the ratio test gives you one more tool in your toolbox of skills to work with series to figure out if it's converging or diverging. Uh, so it doesn't mean you always want to use ratio tests. It just means it might be a useful thing. If it's a p-series, you don't want to use a ratio test. You would just use your understanding of p-series and what the degree is on bottom here. That's what the ratio test is going to do for us today. It's just one more thing to work with. So let's try some examples that do work out, that are not equal to 1. 
I have found it most helpful that when you're working through these things that you first write down what is your A of N plus one and what is your A of N, just to make sure you have them both listed. So now once you have that, now you can start setting up your limit. So limit as N approaches infinity of this ratio is going to be, so you take the N plus one thing. So what did I do? I just plugged in the N plus one to the N, N plus one there, N plus one there. That's all this came from. And then you multiply by the reciprocal of A of N. So you can, instead of dividing by that thing, you're in multiply reciprocal. So we'll just do that each time. And then from here, you're going to use your skills with exponents to recognize that this three to the N plus two is the same thing as three to the N times three to the second. Same thing with this five to the N plus one, three to the N plus one. You can see how I broke it all up down there. And now let's try to cancel stuff out. So I've got a three to the N, a three to the N, uh, five to the N, five to the N. What else? Three to the one can cancel with one of those threes. So then that really cleans up quite a bit. You can see all that stuff's gonna cancel and all I'm left with is this here. N plus one quantity squared times a three and then on bottom five N squared. So since I'm doing a limit as N approaches infinity, I'm just looking, okay, I've got an N squared and N squared. So I'm just doing leading coefficients and that is three fifths. And since three fifths is less than one, that tells us that this series converges. Okay, so I know I'm doing this kind of quickly. Hopefully you can follow along, but you can always pause and write stuff down if you need to. So that was the ratio test for this thing. Since it was less than one, it converges. All right, now let's use uh, the same type of thing, but now we're gonna have some factorials going on here. So we write out the A of N plus one. So plug that into the N, plug that into the N, and then our original. And what do we get from here? We get the, the limit of the ratio. So I take the, the A of N plus one, multiply by the reciprocal of A of N. And now that leads us to this where we need to try to simplify that thing. Let's break it up a little bit. So that's where we get this part right here. So N plus one times N factorial is exactly the same thing as this. They are equivalent. Uh, so once you can see that and break it up, then, and then you can see what I did with the numerator there too, how I, I, I divided that stuff up. Now I can start canceling stuff. So four to the N cancels, N factorial cancels, and that's really nice. I'm just left with four over N plus one. So I have the limit of this thing. That limit is going to equal zero. Since zero is less than one, this whole series converges. All right, that is that one with the ratio test. Okay, so let's do one more example and then we've got it. So now we have one that's a little bit trickier with 2n factorial on top. So I've got this 2n plus two factorial. If you're not sure where that came from, it's because I have two times n plus one factorial. And then the two distributes and gives me 2n plus two. That's where it comes from, 2n plus two. All right, so then I've got that. So now let's set up my ratio. I do my a of n plus one first times A of N reciprocal. And now I have to get something confusing. So that is this. This looks like, what the heck? Where did this all come from? Well, it's because this right here is 2N plus two times 2N plus two minus one. So one less is gonna be 2N plus one times one less than that is just gonna be 2N. And then it keeps going on and on subtracting one. So I can just say, factorial right there, because I'm just gonna keep subtracting one over and over again. That's where that comes from. Okay, so now that you've got that, I can start canceling some stuff out. That is canceled and, oh man, that is all the cancels, okay. So this one's still a bit of a mess, so you still have all of this stuff here, but let's take a look at it. I now have n to the fifth, n and n. That's an n to the seventh power. And on bottom, I have an n to the fifth power. Well, the power on top is larger than the power on bottom, so it's growing faster. This thing is approaching infinity. Infinity is bigger than one, so what does this series do? It diverges. It's diverging since it's larger than one. Okay, so that is the ratio test. You just set up the ratio of this thing right here, this A of N plus one over A of N, have N approach infinity, so it's like you're looking for the vertical, excuse me, the horizontal asymptotes, and then less than one converges, greater than one diverges, equals one, you gotta do more stuff. You can't tell from just, just the ratio test. Okay, rock that master check. It's Mr. Bean signing off, and I'll see you back in our next lesson.